Hi, my name is Alex uh, Godby. I am head of watches for Philips Watches uh, for Middle East and Continental Europe. And we are currently at the Philips offices here in Geneva. So Philips Watches is the world leader in the field of watch auctions. We hold five live auctions per year, two in Geneva, two in Hong Kong, and one in New York. So being a head of the watch department is very close to being, um, imagine a, a hotel director. You do about everything, you check everything. Um, my role with my team is to find watches for the sales, to um, expertise them, to describe them, to val validate them, value them, uh, make sure the photography for the catalog is done well, before that, negotiate the contracts with the client and sell Philips as the auction house to bring those watches to. Um, sell the watches once the catalog is, or, or is out, organize the sale, uh, marketing, digital, communications, just everything, you name it. I mean, we're a small team, so we, we tend to do a lot. Uh, we do, yeah, we tend to do a lot. What I love the most uh, and what I do are obviously the watches. I'm into this business or in this profession for the love of watches. I came to the watch world late uh, because I love watches and I get to see the world's rarest and most beautiful watches almost on a daily basis. What is there not to love? The second is traveling and going to see the collectors and talk watches and just follow them and share stories. So it's it's that's the fun part, the the seeing the watches and meeting the collectors. I think Philips watches is different from other auction houses. First of all, the team, the team are not old um, watch auction veterans, but a majority of us come from the outside world, so with a different view, and what we have in common is the absolute love and passion about watches. We eat, sleep, think, dream about watches on a 24 seven basis. I don't think I've seen anybody else uh, anywhere being like this. It's basically a bunch of watch nuts put together uh, to work together. Luxury is I mean, I think there's as many definition of, as, of luxury as there are people. For some, luxury is just having a meal or a, a home. Uh, for others, it could be a, on a financial level. Um, for me, luxury is, is really doing what I love and being with the people I love. I think the fact that we have mechanical watches today, it still is very relevant. First of all, it's a centuries old craft. And secondly, it's a very sustainable product. We live in a world where everything is made to last for a certain amount of time. You throw it away and buy a new one, maybe your phone, um, car, fridge, whatever. Watches, on the other hand, are made to last. Not only made to last five years, six years, they're made to last centuries if you take care of them and then you can pass it on. So on the contrary, watches, mechanical watches, are a very modern uh, product because they are made to last it's sustainable more than anything else basically i respect i think well, i don't think i respect highly the independent watchmakers because it really is not easy to be at, at the same time an entrepreneur a designer a watchmaker uh, a communications uh, a marketing man or woman and to um to have the courage to go out and create your own pieces and fight against huge bear moths. On the other hand, I have to say I do respect brands uh, like, let's say, Rolex or Omega, who make whose production numbers are close to a million and who have fantastic um, quality control. So may they be making one watch or a million watches, it's the same quality, which is very difficult to achieve. So um, I originally started uh, as a finance lawyer in Paris, 
uh, where I worked for, for 12 years. I was so much in love with watches. My dream was to work in the watch world. And in 2008, uh, Vacheron Constantin offered me the, the possibility to join them uh, and work uh, in the digital and um, social media department. I actually set it up. And for me, it was a no-brainer. Within a second, my answer was yes. I moved to, to Geneva, stayed with Vacheron for eight uh, magnificent years, and then had the opportunity to go into my second passion, which is really um, vintage watches and the auction world, and join Philips, a dream come true, and I've been here for five years and not regretting it a single second. When I'm not working, which is quite uh, rare because um, basically I f well, I don't feel as if I'm working, so I'm like, I feel like I'm having fun. So for me, it's a, I'm available 24-7 to talk about watches with clients, with collectors, by myself, do research with my colleagues. But my other hobbies, I'm a huge, huge uh, ski fan. Uh, so as soon as I can, I, I try to go to the mountains, uh, to hike, to, uh, to ski. Uh, I love cooking. Um, I love good wine. And this leads me to also have to work out a lot. If not, I would be huge. So recently, I've also taken up working out. Uh, I think the watch industry or... Yeah, the watch industry in general is a fascinating industry because it's still mechanics. Uh, it's still a lot to do with people. Uh, it's not a question of machines. It's, it's really a question of people. At the, in the auction world, it's a question of maintaining and respecting objects, watches that were made 50, 70, 100 years ago. It's a question of meeting people. And some people, you change their lives uh, because they discover a watch that belonged to their grandparent uh, they decide to sell it and the price of what they uh, they sell where they can buy a house they can send their kids to college they can pay for uh, for just their everyday life so I think that's 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 that's, that's amazing moments and I think in 2020 it was tough for everybody but watches continued performing and 2020 also saw and I think that's very important if we put aside obviously all the bad news with the pandemic but there was some good news in it which was for us watch lovers, the UNESCO put watchmaking, mechanical watchmaking, on the list of intangible um, assets of uh, the human heritage, which shows the significance and importance of mechanical watchmakings, not only today, but in our human history. The greatest developments would be, I would like to go back 20 years, if you allow me, um, Peter. It would be, uh, I think, one is the rise of independent watchmaking. These watchmakers, before the beginning of the millennium, they were mostly making watches uh, independently or at least anonymously for big brands. And in the past 20, 15, 10 years, we've seen them growing, uh, coming out, becoming uh, huge, uh, actually competing with big behemoths that were like Rolex and Patek or other big brands. And then today you have uh, François Paul Jean, you have... Um, uh, Carrie Voutilain and you have a Philippe Dufour, an MBNF, an Urwerk, who are uh, becoming mainstream names, whereas they're still making uh, between 20 and uh, 200 watches. Uh, another big development was the arrival of new uh, techniques, new materials, silicon, uh, titanium, uh, silicium, uh, and for, 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 watch, for watch movements. And then obviously the big, big change was also the the arrival of in-house, the rise of multi-complication watches. I think the past 20 years, we've seen more uh, developments in the, watch, uh, in the watch history than in the past 200 years. Watchmaking is truly one of the rare industries where we actually have so much choice. I think there are, I read somewhere that there was close to 600 different watch brands. I don't know of any other industry where you have such a, a huge choice. I do think that um, the future of watchmaking is mechanical watchmaking is, is, a, is a bright one. Uh, even though the big, big guys, and we all know their names, are getting the most of the attention, you have the arrival of new, smaller, independent brands, even the rise of micro brands, uh, which speak to a younger generation 
who themselves are entering to the watch watchmaking world and discovering mechanical watches we shouldn't think that only um, old uh, older gray-haired uh, men like myself are interested in watches you also have a younger generation of 20 plus uh, something who are also interested go on kickstarter you have all these mechanical watches which are being bought by 20 year olds 25 year olds and this is great because you have a whole new generation that who is interested in watchmaking mm -hmm.